So what's your name then? Dempsey Lewis. Cool. And I think on socials you're Dempsey Music. Yeah, on Instagram, yeah. But um, yeah, Dempsey Lewis, the full name. Okay. You want anything else? Uh, any um, other socials? Facebook. Um, I had to get rid of Snapchat. It's too much of like... You don't like um, it? Nah, just too many fake profiles trying to... You know, I'm, I'm traumatised. Nearly went blind last time I opened it up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, um, Snap, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Okay, cool. And uh, YouTube is uh, more of your music? Yeah, more of your music, but um, Dempsey Official on YouTube. Okay, nice. Cool, cool. Are you still doing music? I am, but um, with uh, the way life currently is, uh, there's a lot of things I have to get in order before I can really, as you all know, uh, with music, if you're not consistent with it, you're going to fall behind. Mm. You know? And until I get um, a lot of the other affairs in my life in order, it's going to be very hard to put any sort of consistency into, into the music. So... One step at a time. Yeah, fair enough. Have, have you been doing it a long time? Or? Uh, yeah, I've 2010, I think I uh, wow. released my first song. Um, I haven't really quite hit the heights that we did back then. I mean, yeah. uh, it, was, um, it went quite well, um, 2011, 2012 twelve times. I remember um, I had the rap battles 2013 times. It, it did get quite a lot of views, but obviously if, you haven't really, if you're doing one song a year or one song every yeah. six months, you're only you're going to fall behind, you know. It's, it takes a lot to, to keep yourself up a day. No, that's true. How, how did you find the rap battles? Was that kind of your niche at that time? Well, I mean, uh, it, it, was, it was different. It was a new sort of scene I thought I'd, I'd step into. I was never, never as scared to try new things, but yeah. I feel like I should have probably had a bit more practice before going into <laughs> that side of it, but well, you live and learn. Is that based on you looking back at your videos? And, and yeah, that, looking yeah. back at some of the other ones, yeah. But um, yeah, we've done all right. We made some noise, got a few views. That's good. But, yeah. yeah I, I feel. I feel like anything you look at like ten years ago, you're gonna be like, oh, man, yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> well, some of it, some of it, I look back and I think this is better than some of the stuff I make now. But oh, fair enough, a lot yeah. of it, you know, when you're young, you you don't you cringe a little bit when you're in your old squeaky voice. You know. Like yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair enough. And with the rap battles, is it mostly like off off the head, off the top, or is it? Nah, nah. You you got a certain amount of time to prepare and write your. Um, okay. material which is again where I went wrong one of the biggest learning curves for me was to never wait till the week before to start writing always have your stuff prepared you know? oh I see from failure to prepare prepare to failure as they say so yeah we learned some lessons okay so you base the lyrics on your opponent kind of want to cut yeah him yeah it's and... all about uh, anything finding out what you can and uh, adding some sort of comic value to it and witty punchlines you know being a bit clever with it but again it's got to appeal to the type of audience uh that are likely to watch it, you know, and you've got a, there's a science behind it. It's, yeah. so, it's so tricky, but uh, so it's all learning curves. Ah, oh, fair enough. And what, what has been kind of your biggest highlights on your music journey? Well, um, apart from the 2011 times, you know, the tours we did around there and the shows in Isle of Wight, we managed to get nice. quite a lot of views, hit a couple of million views in that, that one year. Um, I remember probably one of the biggest highlights for me was um, finally performing at the O2 Indigo, which nice. I was only a year ago working security at. So, you know, you can imagine walking the artists to their, uh, to the dressing rooms back and forth, seeing them all performing, p p performing, just dreaming of being there one day. And you know, I managed to make that happen, but it was a bit of an anti-climax, you know. I thought, I thought once that happens, I've made it, but yeah. I still have work on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair enough. I think that's how it gets. It's, a, it's, it's quite hard for, for up-and-coming artists. Yeah. Especially when you're independent as well. It's quite hard, I imagine. Exactly that. Yeah. So how, how did you get that gig? How did you I actually had to... to win an audition. Um, All right. I think it was uh, a maze. I think we knew. I think he was. Um, I think he was present at the battle. I'm not sure, but we didn't really. Um, we didn't really get on too well online. Um, you know, there was a bit of back and forth. I think um, after the battle, run of the rap battles that I'd had, um, he, he he put some negative comments out, and I had All to right. go to an audition, which was in the building next to the O2. Um, yeah, and he was one of the judges, uh, funny oh, right. enough. And I had a really good audition. He, um, he shook my hand. We, we had a good chat about music. And um, yeah, he, he put me forward for the, um, for the show. And it was, it was quite, a, quite a nice end to a bad week, really. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, that's good. And you performed uh, Light in the Sky? Light in the Sky, yeah. Nice. That, was, uh, that was one um, I recorded. I wrote that song. I released it 10 years um, on the day that I, my dad passed. Okay, right. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was nice to perform that one in front of a you know, decent crowd like that. I can imagine, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, so it was like a tribute as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's nice. Talking about another one of your biggest tunes, I think Your Lies. 
It's pretty good. Well, it's a funny story with that. <laughs> I, wasn't, I was not even going to release that. Oh, all right, um, why? The, the instrumental got changed on the way to the studio. Wow. Um, it was one of them, like, you know, I liked the lyrics in the verse, but I didn't like the, uh, I just didn't like the sound of it, really. I wasn't too keen on it, but I'm, I think instantly when I released it, it, I noticed it gained more traction far quicker than anything else I'd released. And even to this day, I still think it gets about a thousand views a week just from wow. being on YouTube. And I struggle to get that with 10 hours worth of promoting. Uh, I've got, if I release a track these days, you know, it's hard to, but again, when you get, when you get something in a, in the right place, it almost promotes itself. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of the time, your best, well, the tunes that you don't like, other people love sometimes, yeah. yeah. Even though I think when you're, when you're a musician, you've got the side, are you making music for yourself or are you making mm. music for the audience you're trying to sell to? And it's a fine line. It's a very fine line. I can imagine, yeah. yeah. Do you have any other plans for music upcoming? I know you've, um, you said it's been off your mind for the well, moment. 2019, um, I started Dempsey Events. Um, I was okay. getting kind of sick of people not booking me into their shows, so I thought I'll start, <laughs> I'll start booking my own. Um, but initially I started that from, um, obviously we had a court case for child access. Um, my little girl, she was 18 months old at the time. I'd seen her every day of her life coming into that point. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was, there was a 64 day gap between getting the initial court process set up and having an interim order, uh, which is temporary supervised access. We wait for the outcome of the hearing. So I had a lot of um, spare time at that moment and um, I needed to you know, take, take my mind off everything going on. So I put that into starting my own events company. Um, yeah, and we done, we done pretty well. Um, again, it's all learning curves. It was going in at the deep end quite blind with it. And it was more using that to try and distract myself from the other things that were going on. But, um, and that was going very well until uh, COVID. Um, oh, I think right. we managed 28 shows in a year and um, wow. there was a lot of, um, you know, you, 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 if you don't book them on the right weekends, you know, we took a lot of weekends in, uh, around Christmas time, which unfortunately um, a lot of people don't have much money set around Christmas times and it's harder to sell tickets and I ended up still having to pay my staff and stuff like that. So there was a lot of, um, yeah. a lot of events where we didn't really break even, but then towards the um, 2020 times before COVID hit, um, things had just started becoming more successful and we kind of cracked the formula a little bit, but then worldwide lockdowns. Um, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> um, but the court case, um, that continued up until 2021, which okay, was right. all through COVID and... Um, wow. Yeah, and um, despite winning the court case, it's still an ongoing, um, an ongoing thing, which kind of led me into a bit of a new fight and a new... Um, a new goal for like, because um, I've noticed this sort of thing is happening to too many fathers, uh, yeah. not just fathers, it seems mothers are in some circumstances not being granted the rights that they deserve and children are being affected by it. And what I want to do long term is, uh, is use the publicity that the um, court case and um, issues surrounding my daughter has got to try and potentially uh, get the laws changed uh, one day or make it so this sort of thing can't happen so easy. And what, but, what is it exactly that is happening? Well, um, it's, it's very hard to go from the top, but if we're going to... So I, I, I've got a very, very good relationship with my daughter. I think everybody that knows me knows that that's uh, the biggest, the most important part of my life. Um, I've seen that, yeah. So, yeah, and obviously with the court case, it was very hard going from seeing her every single day to then two hours a week on a Sunday, I think it was supervised, you know, by people oh, right. watching over you. Like you're some, you know, like like you're some wrongin, really, and it's yeah. and it's hard. Like, but, um, it, it was very tricky because um, she was entitled to legal aid um, and had free representation, um, and I didn't. So I had to go to oh, the, wow. went to the library, just took every book on family law I could, studied it, found out enough that enough that I was able to. I knew that any accusations that were made against me were false, as well as the fact that I knew that. I'd never done anything um, to warrant not being in my child's life. So it was just a case of highlighting to the judge the real scenario and keeping myself patient enough to deal with, um, deal with the issues that come in between. So, yeah. How, how did it all begin? Was it a breakup and then? We was never really for actually oh, together. together. And, yeah. um, and again, I feel like that was part of the reason why she ended up falling pregnant in the first place because mm. You know, some, sometimes women think if a man, if you're pregnant, if you get somebody pregnant, that you're, you're likely to stay with them. And um, yeah. 
I made it very clear from the get go, get -go that um, I was more than happy to be a father, but I was not going to expose my daughter to that sort of toxic environment. You know, and having a daughter, I think it's uh, very important to see um, that she's, uh, you're wiring her brain for life. And if she's uh, you know, subjected to all that sort of arguing in a toxic environment, then she's going to become desensitised to it and maybe make some mistakes when it comes to picking a partner herself like, later on in her life. You, know, you don't see abuse when it's uh, there because it's almost familiar. Yeah, I see. So, um, so yeah, I, I had to bite the bullet. I knew that there would be repercussions from that. Um, she, told, she said to the judge that I can see my daughter when she turns 18 years old. Wow. And uh, she, she was only 18 months at the time. Um, yeah, it was a... Uh, so wh where's that kind of toxicity and, or like her, her stopping you from seeing the child? Where's I think that? it's a generational thing. Um, yeah. You know, bad habits get passed down sometimes and I don't think there's been any... Um, she's never met her own father. Um, and I think that was the same, um, the same scenario for her mother too. Um, I don't know the ins and outs completely, but... Yeah. It wasn't seemed as seemed. It wasn't seen as important, like to have a father there. And again, um, she drops out of education very young. She never went to secondary school, so she never really developed the social skills that most of us do in this time. So I just think mm. her judgment was very off. Didn't realise the benefits of having a father there that was going to be putting one hundred percent into his child and there at any call. She did. She just didn't didn't understand how how most parents, uh, how most mothers will give their right arm for someone that does that. And it just become more about proving that she doesn't need a man to do it rather than... Oh, right. So, yeah. Um, I, and I think she thought that, you know, by making it difficult, um, that I would have got, given up eventually or I would have walked away from it. Um, which for me, uh, that wasn't an option. You know, I lost my father quite young, just before I turned nine. And for me, being a dad is the only thing that's ever even slightly filled that void. Oh. Um, so I was never going to back down. I was never going to give up. And I'm still to this day going through absolute hell. Um, so when that court case initially started, um, there was a campaign of false, false allegations and wrongful arrests. Wow. You know, for example, there was a time that um, I texted her to say, because uh, say that she was um, the, the trains were delayed and I'm going to be about 15 minutes late bringing her home. Yeah. She told me I'm going to call the police and said you say you hit me. I videoed the altercation. Wow. I videoed her saying this. I videoed myself turning up to the address and I videoed myself leaving. The police they all locked me up for 23 hours. Um, this is on, on what charge? On domestic assault, which was then oh based on what she said. Based yeah. on what she said. Yeah. Now, the reason her reason for doing this is because when there's an allegation of violence, um, a, a woman will get free representation for the court case. Um, and the, the stunt that she pulled, well, under advice from her legal team, was to take a non-molestation order, which was like a restraining order. It was one day after I applied for child access, she took a restraining order. Wow. So I had to, before I could even start the access case, I had to disprove all these allegations and get the non-molestation order thrown out. And that's what took two years. Um, and it was again, I, I was arrested so many times, uh, so many separate incidents, and every single time they say they know what she's doing. Unfortunately, there's a protocol to follow. People don't want to lose their Christmas bonuses. And um, unfortunately with a man, sometimes it seems to be guilty until proven innocent. And mm. there, is a, there is a lot of scenarios where I think that is appropriate and that does need to happen because there are a lot of bad, bad people out there and there are a lot of women that fall victim to this kind of thing. Um, <coughs> With, with that being said, and the situation in hand, would you, would you say she's a good mother in general? I feel like she loves her daughter, our daughter. But yeah. again, where she's, um, she's not developed the sort of social skills that, that most of us have and mm. just general life skills uh, that she, she tends to put my daughter in danger from not, for example, she has a very uh, abusive partner. Oh, right. The police have had to remove him several times from the address. Um, wow. All sorts of incidents have happened. Um, and it was me highlighting these incidents and showing the, the evidence to social services, which is what resulted in the recent, um, the recent problems. Again, I was arrested uh, several weeks ago, uh, mm. two and a half weeks ago, I think it was. No, it was about a month ago now. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm going a bit off sub subject now. No, that's right. But, um, yeah, I, I was arrested about a month ago, 
26 or 27 days. <laughs> um, and this was straight immediately after I'd, um, I'd informed social services and welfare officers in our school. But just a, just a big catalogue of it have been incidents that have happened, things that are clearly putting my daughter in danger. I'm not too sure how much I can go, detail I can go into with some of these because the cases are still pending. Okay. But the sort of stuff that as a father makes you sick and, you know, you imagine the thought of your daughter being put in danger, generally to the point that police have had to remove a man mm. from the house because he was trying to attack, you know, wow. a, a child and her mother, you know, they've had to barricade doors to protect themselves. Yeah. But what happened? Um. He put a what? Hanging thing on his neck from behind, but then mummy said no. Then he jumped off the balcony, then mummy said no. What, in front of you? Yeah. One day later, two days later, where it was, she's got him back living at the address again. I see you. And yeah. I only wanted a conversation with a man. Uh, you know, I knew that whether I liked it or not, it's gonna, she's going to probably have involved me in her life. And the best thing I could do was build some sort of relationship with him so we can communicate and I can understand what's causing these issues so that we can prevent it happening again. I like, had like, you know, if, if he's having breakdowns like this, there's got to be a reason. How do we help you? How do we solve this? Um, no one wanted to talk to me. Nobody wanted to resolve the issue and too much attention was put into covering up his, um, his mistakes and his, um, his issues that, yeah, it just become a campaign of Again, getting me arrested and trying to disprove the credibility of anything I've said. Hello. 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 After she can snap her fingers and I'll get arrested and locked in a cell overnight every single time. But there's how many of these breezes has she done? And you're telling me I've just got to stand here and go home peacefully and not get to see my child again. It's just. But this is the thing, I, I need to ask them. I asked yeah. if she'd be happy. Come down here just for 10 20 minutes today, just so you do get to she see her. She's just trying to keep something straight. She said you can ask her. She didn't no. want Yeah, because they're brainwashing her. They, they probably are. And, they're and brainwashing her. And the longer the, the longer this goes without me seeing her, the harder it's going to be to reverse all these lies that they're probably telling her. Mm. You know, so yeah. you don't realise the damage this is going oh, to do 100%. by not. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not that we don't see it, and it, the situation in general is shit. Like you can tell you're doing everything you can. You're pushing for it as well. Mm. Yeah. What, what more? If you log it with the court, I, th I think what happens is after a couple of breaches that are logged with the court, they can attach a pair of arrest yeah. to the, the order. High, yeah, the higher it keeps yeah. going up, mm. the more. You mm. see them, see? So if it's logged with the court, they, can, they change the order so a uh, power arrest is attached to the order. And then that would be different. Still, they would be able to then, arrest don't her know what, her down. You don't know what sort of lies they'd have told her and how that would have affected she her by say, that point. You listen, don't know. You do know as well that um, it won't be that long and <laughs> you'll, uh, you'll want a break. Yeah. Um, yeah, and ironically, she's got another baby coming. She, well, she said on the paperwork that, that she don't want. Well, she said that she don't want me seeing her for the rest of the summer holidays, which is ironically just before she's about to give birth to her other child, and then she's mm. going to need a break. I mean, it's just mm. it's total. It's when as and when it suits her. Yeah. But, I, mean, it's I just don't think and, it's going to be long before you see her because of how it is. But you definitely need to log it with the court. Yeah, well, I'm going to. Obviously, obviously we'll, we'll put our paperwork on our end. It's going to have to be the same thing here. on Saturday, and we'll have to turn up here again on Saturday. And obviously, it's yeah, and I be said we're going to have to call the police so that there's a log of us of the breach. Yeah. 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 All right. But obviously, we'll Sorry. put paperwork on our end so when it does get to social work, because they pick this up as well. The same guard yeah. reports on. Yeah. Um, obviously, she is happy up there, but it is. I don't know if they're just saying every day, but obviously, it is quite cramped up there with the amount of people that are up there. Mm. Um, and they'll look at that as well. And then all you can do is do everything at your end, we'll do what we can our end. 
Okay, if it's not just that, there's safeguarding issues as well here. The, 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 like I've highlighted all these, these issues to social. This is why they're trying to keep me in the dark, because Lily tells me everything that's happening at home. I've got yeah. evidence of everything. Yeah. And the more they're keeping me in the dark, I can't protect her. I, I don't know what to do. Yeah. It's, it, there's so much to this that yeah. it's... It's like, to be fair, it's, it feels like that people ain't going to do nothing until something bad happens to my daughter. And this is the kind of... I'll be a bit... But you can understand, obviously, we don't have any powers at the minute. Yeah, I know. I know, but all right. Well, Baby, you did try it. I know. I appreciate you coming. Yeah, but but um, and yes, we will call you yeah. next they Just say that we've got a yeah, picture. Do you want a cab number for today? Yes, yes please. please. Social services um, have got all the evidence. They've had it for a long time, and it's been very hard to get a social worker to even sit down and um, have a conversation about this, despite having the evidence. Um, there's been issues with the police. You know, when the police removed the partner from the address, um, mm. they never informed social services and they've got a duty of care to, whenever they're, wow. whenever they're called to an address when the child's present, they've got a duty of care to inform social services. And um, when I had informed social services about the incident, they have no, no, um, no recollection idea. of the incident and wow. several other ones as well. So protocol hasn't been followed a lot of times uh, when you add up the, the amount of times running into the 20s that I've been arrested on false allegations despite having letters from judges clearly stating um, that she has a history of this that she's not to be believed that she's a fantasist word for uh, I, I'm not, I can't recite word for word for legal yeah. things but it ripped her a new one basically and I thought that having this letter from the judge having over 20 to, 20 to 30 uh, wrong for arrest with all the case a case reports. Um, I, I would have thought that would have made me pretty immune when it comes to these allegations being made again. Yeah. But again, we've seen that she's <clears> able to call the police any time and they will come and arrest me, lock me up, ask questions after. And even when presented with the evidence, they don't seem to listen to it and keep me for the maximum amount of time, which is understand that on the, the police are only seeing domestic assault and that comes into the category of you know, they, they categorize people in there you, you see that come up in your system you're just going to think oh he must be he's a woman beating scumbag they're not looking yeah. into the fact of oh, this has happened a lot of times there's evidence that strongly suggests that this this woman's lying but that, again they have the protocol to follow and um and i'm fortunately i'm being made to be locked up every single time wow wow so every every time she throws out a false allegation, every the police come every time and, and they arrest me. And you 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 get arrested. I'm arrested um, without wow. foul. She's never made an allegation I haven't been arrested for. What what kind of allegations are these? It's always um, he pushed me or. All oh, right. The most recent one, um, the one that I've just uh, the balcony. The, the officer called me five minutes before I turned up here. Yeah. Um, I was on I was on bail until next Tuesday, the twelfth of September. Is that with the court order? Um, oh. No, this was a new, this was oh, a completely free. separate, okay, right, separate see, yeah. incident. So, yeah. obviously, I had a court order which protects the access. She's, yeah. she's meant to um, adhere to the court order, otherwise, she's meant, meant to be arrested. If um, I think it's legislation ever since 2008, every single child arrangement order is meant to contain a power of arrest or power of warning attached to it, which mm -hmm. means the police, uh, she can't be prosecuted on something if she hasn't had a warning first. Yeah. Now, uh, my, my child arrangement order is the only one um, in the world, it's the same, that doesn't contain the power of arrest or power of warning attached. Wow. Now, that, th that was a mistake on the court's part, but because of this, it's left me with less rights than when I initially, than before I won the court case, because the live with order states that my daughter's meant to live with her. So the police will always arrest me and, bring her, and, and take my daughter if ever I'm, I'm not adhering to the court, uh, to the, uh, court order. Wow. But because there's no power of arrest attached to it, any time she breaches it, they can't warn her or arrest her. And because of that, I can't log the breach to get it back to court. And Do, it, do you think that's intentional? That they, they I missed think it's very there? intentional. Yeah. Um, again, this is where one of the issues of me not having a solicitor and representing myself during the court case uh, falls because... Yeah. Because that's uh, something they would have pushed for. Yeah, yeah. and it's more that the judge, all the paperwork had to be kind of sent to her solicitor and then forwarded to me. Mm -hmm. And there's always been pages missing out of things. Uh, during the, the during, when the court cases were happening, one of the tactics they would do is not email me the the, uh, the court date until the night before. So chances wow. are I wouldn't see it. And then they'd try to make a decision in my absence. But then I'd have to go to the next hearing to prove that I only received the email less time. Do you know, it was just trying every trick in the book to delay yeah. the... Uh, the hearing and 
again, it's very frustrating to win that court case, have that paperwork that says that my contact should be protected by law, to then um, have that very same paperwork go against me every time she breaches an order. And it's incredibly hard. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, it was yesterday, I waited all summer holiday to see my child. Because yeah. um, the police, obviously, they can't enforce the breach. So I, I knew that once she's in school, the school have the power to, um, with, with a court order, to refuse her to hand her to the mother on the day that I'm supposed to be picking her up. Okay, wow. So I pre-arranged with the school. Um, that they, I asked them to let me leave early to avoid any conflict at the gate with the mother. They said mm -hmm. no. So I said, well, the only other alternative here is that I'm going to have to bring the police with me to enforce the breach and it'll have to be a big scene in the playground in front of the whole school, mm -hmm. uh, which they didn't want. So they kind of agreed to it. We sat down, went through the court order. They said, no, you're completely right. But because she's kicking off, we're going to have to call the police and they're going to have to. Wow. So the police have come again. She's smashing the place up, making threats. Again, something that I would have 100% been arrested for on the spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. But... Um, They've come in to speak to me um, because of the uh, the initial the last allegation of assault, um, the one that happened last month. They um, she was trying to use that as an excuse of why the the court order was not would not be valid to, uh, yesterday. So, oh, right. I my bowel conditions clearly stated on the paperwork um, that the, uh, the 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 terms and conditions of the contact were not to be interrupted. That as long as I had the mediator. Um, and I didn't pick her up at her address, or so I went to the school, that by law, they could not stop it. This is irrelevant though, this is irrelevant right now. How does, I don't get how we're now, like I've won a court case, I've got court order for this day, the bail condition state that it's not meant to be interfered with, yet I don't because get what's, what you're trying when to... I, when I speak to the supervisor, it's because the, the current court orders from 2021... Doesn't matter what it is, it's valid forever, know, right? Well, there's no expiry date on there. Is that, if it's, 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 there's no expiry date, so why does it matter when the court order, order came out? In the full thing, it's called the court order should be staying in place. Is that the full court order? Yeah. Because that's only... Yeah, we've only pages. got the child arrangements order. Well, she she couldn't get us that either. Yeah. Full, she said there's a, a full booklet. Yeah, the, state, the, 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 one, the, the booklet, booklet, booklet yeah. stating yeah. what... Her yeah. solicitor sent her, sent him, because she had the representation, so right. her solicitor's in charge of the bundle. Okay. So we sent it to him, and then, because it's things weren't right, so we contacted the court, the court sent one, which was different to what her solicitor had sent. But they're both different to what was agreed. It's all grey. So he does need to go into court and clarify. Yeah. Yeah. You do. Yeah. And, like, we are really sorry that What's we can't... Can I get the name of the so supervisor that's authorised this? Yeah, you can. We can give you the reference number. Also, also you're right. next Wednesday... I'll bring her into school next Wednesday. Yeah, they're just going to let us the point. They're just going to do the no, same thing again. No, because oh. that won't, you're back at the police on Tuesday and they should all yeah. be dropped on Tuesday because there's going to be no evidence. There isn't no, they've already like, stated that they're no, not I'm just saying, so, they'll let you know but, on but Tuesday, by Tuesday, that, that won't be able to be a reason <laughs> that you can't have Lily next Wednesday. Yeah, she just won't bring her into school next Wednesday and you know that as well. Can I just clarify, she, she does bring her to school. She's breached it about 74 times, 76 times. Next Wednesday. It depends on the outcome of... The yeah, if the outcome of, if the outcome of the last allegation was like, no further charges, no evidence, it's all been dropped, on a Wednesday... Well, well, yeah, we'd hope so, but we can't say for sure. I, I stood, what I can't get my head around is the fact that it states on the bail conditions that my contact is not, there's no difference. Yeah. That as long as... So why are you, I can't believe that you're... It, it seems to be... It does seem this funny corrupt. because when they said these are your bowel conditions, yeah, so it doesn't say you can't see Lily until this is sorted. It says contact should, should still stay. happen. Yeah, I, we need a more up to date one with the, of this. And yeah, but you know that the bowel conditions well. that you gave him, they state that contact shouldn't be affected. Yeah, it's that's what he says. So I don't know why they're now saying yeah, because of the last allegation. Yeah, yeah, the one that you're saying it now says, is the reason why I can't see yeah, it. Yeah, it says it on says wording. That um, contact um, won't be affected until you. So yeah, that is to still. Yeah. And you just can't go. Yeah. Our, well, our but you're using the same. Our supervisor says if there's. Because it's a assault, the allegation against you. She assaulted me. Okay. I sent yeah. the video to the detective of but her but throwing a car seat at me. It's an and me leaving. Obviously, it's an allegation at the moment, and it's still going. Like, yeah, being it's an allegation. Yeah, there's yeah, another no. allegation where I've been guilty till proven innocent. And again, right now, I'm still. Did you get the officer's details? The Which one? You sent the video to. Got an email address for her. Yeah, okay. Because you can contact her. Bouchon hasn't been. 
There's a question about that. Nothing about, about anything. Ever, ever, ever. Did you ever. find the police first to say? You so, said no, what's happened. Always when I buy you report it again and you give the reference number. Look, but be honest, okay, this, you lot will not do anything to solve this until either I kill myself or he hurts my daughter. Someone hurts my child or I kill myself and then suddenly laws will start changing. This is, a, this is what... Uh, what do you know how many dads have killed themselves over this sort of shit? Dads. I know, it's not fair. It's, it's not, not fair. fair. At the moment, how many times have you right got me up for At nothing? At the moment, it's only temporary. And hopefully, next week, it'll be dropped if there's an if. It's not temporary. This is five years I've been going through this. I don't know how much more of this I can take. I know, and we are sorry. But there's only so much we can do. Yeah, so arrest me and let her come every time. That seems to be the protocol these days. I mean, I know you've got... You, you, you're, you, you, it's not yours. You've no, reported to... I know we've all got bosses and we'll have to, I appreciate that, but you can, no, I know you can see this. You can get your frustration and we're, we're yeah. in the mid, do you know what I mean? We're trying to do the best for everyone. And this is he's well. most upset because he's so worried about, about Lily's welfare. We're, we're all really worried about Lily's welfare and the longer it goes on without him seeing her, the more concerned yeah. And we're going we we're gonna to put a report on when we go back to the station and, and it'll flag it to social services. services. Well as well as social services. School. I've sent all this to social, they've not even done anything yeah. about it. Well, hey, the, the social worker, yeah. the same one that works here, when I should tie the teller with the evidence of her mum's boyfriend, she said to me, word for word, it sounds like you're a jealous ex-boyfriend to me. And then start get, started talking all chatty down the phone, using all slang and stuff like that. I thought, this is not the woman. The woman who's in charge of my daughter's yeah. safety, the social worker. Um, is, I've done everything you can think of. I've done everything you can think of. Are you and Lily up to that um, child yeah. in me? <laughs> yeah, that's why that's why right. this so it won't stuff. just be it's be. It's not even this little Okay, listen. Now, a supervisor, after sitting for four hours talking to the police, a supervisor right. has called up and said, no, don't let them see her because of the court order because it was an allegation of assault. Today, they've now sort of me up apologising, saying, yep, we've seen the evidence that I've sent in and it'll be no further action again. But again, it's it missed the opportunity to see my child yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'll have to wait until Wednesday again to try and pick her up again when the school can enforce it. But she'll, like, she'll most likely not allow her to go to school on that day. So if she's not in school, the school can't enforce it. Wow. So there's, there's even loopholes that she can Isn't do as well. all loopholes, but unfortunately my, my, my child is five years old now, which means she, will, she can le legally be prosecuted for not bringing her in. And last year wow. my daughter had a 40% attendance. Uh, and I went to every parent's evening myself. I went to a, a regular meetings with the attendance officers, welfare officers, was highlighting to them the issues at home and showing them why she's not been in school. You know, there was always she's had a stomach ache or she had a cold. Whereas I know it had been a fight with a boyfriend the night before, which has resulted in my daughter being woken up seven or eight times and not being able to make it. How do you feel about this level of exposure that your, your child is going through? It's know? horrible, it's horrible because it's, it's, she's, she's, she shouldn't be going through it. She shouldn't be seeing it. And again, what I was saying, like I was saying earlier, um, it's all this, what she's watching with her parents, her mum and her step, uh, and um, her mum's boyfriend, um, Again, it, it's desensitising mm. th these sort of situations in her head. You know, she doesn't even flinch when something gets smashed in front of her or when oh, they wow. shower her. She doesn't even bat her eyelids. It's been normalised. Yeah. It's been very normalised. Mm. And she's almost got to the point she's scared to tell me things that, um, that have happened out of fear of reprisals from the mother. Um, oh, right. Well, you know, if I pick her up, she wants to tell me something's happened and she'll look around and go, can I tell you on the other road? You know, and uh, when she tells me things, she asks me to not tell mummy. And... It's horrible, but at the same time, I, I can't, if I start telling her mum things that she's asked me not to, yeah. she may not be, feel comfortable to tell me these things in future. No, that's true, yeah. But when it's something that puts her in, that she's in danger, where's the middle ground for this? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's very, very hard. I'd say you're, you're quite a difficult position uh, right now. How, how do you deal with, or how are you so mature? Because I mean, I, I know I'd be kicking and screaming or, you know. Kicking and screaming, <clears throat> the problem is while well, she's trying to paint the narrative of me and being some violent, abusive ex-partner that's uh, battering her black and blue every single day. I if see, I yeah. now start kicking off, yeah. it kind of validates things that she, the lies that she said. I don't want for a second the judge to think, uh, to use one moment of, um, you know, it, it, was, it takes is one moment of losing your temper. It doesn't Confirm, matter how good you've yeah. been your whole life. That would be that would be your legacy. No, I understand. Refuse yeah. to allow it to, to come to that point. So, 
at the end of the day, all I want is to be a dad to my little girl. And if this is, if I got to bite my tongue, I bit my tongue for five years, so um, I can do another five if needs be. But no, yeah. oh, fair enough. So, so what I'm getting from this is that there's, you know, would you say there's quite a uh, injustice between men and women in the court system? And, and even a, the policing system as well. There is a hundred percent, hundred percent more so with the policing system, I feel, than the legal system. Oh, right. Uh, and the, the court system. There are, um, again, this is the kind of what I want looking to do long term with the publicity this is generating is to, you know, potentially get these laws changed. But again, what I'm saying, it's, I'd hate for me to get laws loosened that potentially put my daughter in danger one day because she didn't have the same protection that women t tend to have now. So it's a fine line between protecting a man's rights and keeping uh, women safe. And uh, this, I'm, I'm struggling to work science out around it because- I can imagine. It's, uh, it's quite difficult to- So how, in your experience, how much does it take for a man to be arrested and for police to not even hear your side of things and just, well, just put you in handcuffs? He breathes there's a potential <laughs> chance Jeez. i mean i've i've been sitting at home none the wiser not even being around or had any communication with her but she yeah. received a call from social services about an incident and assumed that i've been the one to put, put it through but yeah and then next oh. thing you know i'll have the police at my door and i've apparently gone around and punched her or something you know and the last incident that occurred was um believe it or not the police picked her up from her house drove her to my house to remove my child to then ask me to borrow a car seat to drive them all the way back home. Wow. Now on the Wednesday, when I've uh, dropped her home after the contact, she's yeah. demanded I take the car seat, but I didn't have the car. So I've said to her, I can't take it today. She's lost her temper and thrown this car seat at me and my daughter. Wow. And it was the same car seat that the police have dri driven all the way home. They've driven a I've called the police myself to let them know that I've, she's assaulted us. Um, that I've had my daughter, she's safe. I've tried to bring her back home as the, con as the, the, uh, the court all the states. I needed to have her back for a certain time. I was letting her know my daughter was safe, that she was with me, that I was taking her to somewhere where she can be okay. And yeah. they, they didn't even question her. She, not even a word to her. They went straight to arrest me, raided 10 hours, she's looking for me. Um, everybody, everybody I knew that they were calling up. Uh, yeah, and I handed myself in several days later and they kept me for about 23 hours, 22 and a half hours. Wow. And this was turning up with um, letters from judges saying she has a history of this, crime reports from the last 20 or so times that she's um, had, had been arrested on a false allegation. Um, every bit of evidence you can imagine, the court order, uh, time, timelines of all the, the reports to social services in comparison to when her allegations come. I thought, I, I thought it was a solid case where anybody can go like that and go, yeah. we apologise. Yeah. But again, the protocol states that they will, they will not arrest her, they will not question her, they will arrest me and lock me around in a cage like I'm an animal until they can get somebody that can be bothered to read through it. And yeah. it's a repeated, repeated cycle, this. No, no, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, so it's literally tattletale as soon as she says something. So yeah. when, when the shoe's on another foot and then you, you've called the police about her, no, nothing's really no, nothing, occurred? Nothing's nothing. ever, ever happened. Wow. Nothing's ever happened. They've never even questioned her. So do you feel women are protected under, under law? I, I mean, I know women well, should I mean, be protected. I feel like in these sort of scenarios, they're more vulnerable and they're more likely yeah. to fall victim to this sort of stuff. So I feel like they need to be. But again, okay. I think common sense needs to be put into play. And yeah. when, there's, when there's a repeated cycle and it's a clear cycle and an obvious one, you've got to start saying that, I know the protocol says this, but we can clearly see that mm. there needs to be a sort of middle ground. No, I agree, I agree. I know you said you represented yourself at court. Uh, do, you, do you feel like things would have been different if you, if you actually had a lawyer as well? Yeah, I'd probably have been about 10 grand lighter. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, fair um, enough. But, yeah. And I feel like it may have taken a little bit longer. The problem yeah. is with these, um, with these family law lawyers, they're paid by the hearing and by the hour rather mm. than by the case. So it's not in their interest to solve it as quickly as possible. Yeah. And that was one of my main reasons for trying to tackle this myself. But again, with a combination of COVID and, um, you know, not having an understanding of how the legal system works, you know, it ended up dragging on for two whole years. But I learned enough that it kind of gave me the best chance that one of the risks were, was her moving. She attempted to move to South End. So I looked into how oh. to get a prohibited steps order so she couldn't move within a certain distance because that would have been... That'd have been very hard to continue. The, the, I, I would have obviously made it work, but it would have been very difficult traveling to there and back every single week yeah. and every other day. Um, I managed to set, yeah, 
yeah, it was the previous step sword we had to set up first. We set the interim order, which was the temporary supervised access. Because I wanted, I, it was important that I still maintain the relationship with her while we waited for this to happen. Yeah. Um, and eventually, after 20 or so different hearings and a lot of messing about, I got the, um, I won the case um, and I got the, um, I got the, the access that I wanted, which I asked for, it was granted. Brilliant. But unfortunately, when the paperwork came, it wasn't what was agreed in court. Wow. So again, it was with that plus the fact that we didn't contain the child arrange, uh, power of arrest or power of warning attached, it's got me thinking was the court papers fraudulent. You know, it's very hard getting to the bottom of these things, and I, I don't doubt for a second if I had had a solicitor, they would have spotted that at the, at the start, and I wouldn't probably wouldn't be doing this right now. So no, I understand. Talk, talking about that, then, um, how is it that she's, or why is it that the, the woman in the situation would be entitled to legal aid, but the man wouldn't be? Um, again, I think it might come down to vulnerability. Yeah. Is, is it a certain criteria you have to, you have well, to kind of meet to get It's to get just that? more if there's an allegation of violence. It doesn't even have to be proven, just if there's an allegation of it. I see. And again, it should have been clearly obvious that what, if it was one day after I've applied for access that this restraining order has been taken out, it's a bit coincidental. And yeah. again, I feel like that should have been thrown out instantly in the first hearing. But again, I had to wait two years for that to get thrown out. And then... Mm the access case took a day, so. So, in your experience of things, would you say, you know, the woman can kind of take control, manipulate the situation? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although, I don't feel like she had the intelligence to manipulate the situation. Mm. There was a lot of coercion from her solicitors. Yeah. Um, obviously, they're government funded, so it was in no, um, it was in no interest of theirs to, to hurry the case up. They was happy to keep prolonging it and getting paid by the hour. Yeah, fair enough. Mm. I'm sure it's good for you to, to get off your chest as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it does. Yeah. It does help. I mean, I get a lot of messages on Facebook and people going, "You want to talk?" But All right. it's it's quite. <laughs> you know, again, I feel like sometimes I'm repeating myself to people. People are asking, "Is there anything I can do?" And it's like, I appreciate you being there, but it's, it's generally there's nothing like. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, ju it's just support, isn't it? It's yeah, just yeah. support. Yeah. Which is which is helpful, but it's yeah. You can't really help the situation yeah. in hand sometimes. I mean, I get a lot of messages from dads asking for advice of how to. Oh, know, right. Because uh, there's, this happens a lot, and I've helped a lot of people get get their court cases up and running, get people on the right track. People that didn't know to, you know, was was having court proceedings, waiting several months between hearings and having no right. contact with their child. So I taught them how to apply for interim orders, and you know, just get just basically uh, little steps that they can take to make sure make sure the people, judges know that they're committed to seeing their child, you know, that that they are doing something and ensuring that the contact stays stays mm. happening. Um, some people have won their cases since, and this is one of the most frustrating thing is because I'm coaching people on how to win their cases, on, and I've won a case that's not even a win. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's just, yeah. it's hard, obviously, because you're, you're living it. But it's, sometimes it's a, it's a learning curve as well, because obviously you can go back and tell other people, you know, make sure you do this and make yeah. sure you do that, yeah. which which helps other people quite a lot. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But one frustrating thing for me is I get but the majority of the messages I get asking for help are not from the dads themselves. From yeah. the dad's new girlfriend that wants them to have a relationship with her. All oh, right. And you know, and it was, and it, it made it like, and I will always help anyone. Yeah. Like yeah. it makes me sick. It makes me sick. You think <laughs> all you had to do was be a dad. You know, you got part of your your, your kid's mother's begging you to be there. Like, yeah. And, and here I'm having to do to do over a thousand hours in cells and wrong for arrest every other week and being made out to be every few God, some of the accusations that came out. That's, that's what I'm, I'm looking at you and you seem, you know, very mature about it. You're very, like, relaxed. I know, I know you said that, but I mean, it's, it's you know, good, good for you because honestly, that's a, that's a hard situation to, to, to not just kind of go crazy sometimes. It's just more, it's kind of productive. Yeah, like, no, I'm saying. Don't go, and there's, there's times I've been at home, like, and, and I've, I've, had, I've wanted to smash me fucking up. <laughs> I've, I've been so angry, like, she drives yeah. me mad. You know, there's times I've left her house and like, I'm trying to say bye to my daughter, but because she's got the ump, she's, nope, you're not saying bye to her. She's crying on the other side of the door. Oh, wow, yeah. But it breaks your heart, you know, yeah. it breaks your heart. And, you know, you just want to kick that door down and take her up and leave, you know. But, I can imagine, yeah, yeah. But, again, you got to do it the right way, and you? otherwise you're always going to be doing it. Yeah. But, how, how old were you when you had... Um, I was 24. Is, is it just one, one child you have? One. Yeah. I, I don't know, again, and I'd love to have <laughs> another child, but it's... Yeah. I couldn't do all this again. Oh, fair enough. I couldn't yeah. do all this again. Then again, I'm pretty sure I'd pick a better partner next time because I've been single since before she was born. Wow. Um, 
but yeah, I don't feel like I could. Uh, I mean, I know he's got. I could not do it. I could not do it. I could not do it. It's it's hard because obviously you you know you have you have a child and a daughter. Yeah, yeah you have a daughter, girl. and you know I, I know you can't do things differently. Uh, but if you could, um, is it, or would you, what advice would you give to someone then who who wanted children? Who wanted children or yeah. has children? Who who wants children? Make sure that you are the sort of person that you want your kid to look up to. And if you haven't, people don't start thinking about it usually until they get somebody pregnant, you mm. know. And I feel like if people got into every relationship thinking, well, I want this to be the mother or father of my child. Yeah. You know, I feel, but then again, it's, it's, it's it doesn't always work out. Like people don't think, you, you, you know, if you, if you start getting in relationships on a day one, you're thinking about kids and that is, you, you, you're not doing the right thing. Like you need to get to know people before them sort of thoughts even get in your head. And then yeah. once you end up liking someone, sometimes you're blind to, to certain traits, aren't you? you know? And it's hard to tell people that haven't got kids. It's hard to tell how they will be when they do because your whole life has to change. Like you can't just be, and this is the problem a lot of dads, they think that it, it's like their baby mum's had a kid. Mm. It's not like they've had a kid, you know. Like when, when the, the kid gets hurt, the kid, the kid ain't got food or kid, they ain't got money. They just, they, they, it was back of their mind. They're not going to think about it. Right. You know, they'll just pretend that, you know, uh, one of the common things I, I've noticed is when, when a woman may stop the father from seeing um, the child, they will instantly resort to, I'm not going to pay, I'm not going to pay my. And again, this is kind of what went in my favour for the court case because I still paid her every week, way more than she wow. was legally entitled to. But the point I was making was, why would I deprive my child of stuff to spite, just to spite her mother? Yeah. And if she isn't getting to see her dad, I want her to have this, some little luxuries that she was familiar with, you know, her Netflix, her ice creams when she goes out and things. I wouldn't want to do anything that not only she can't see her dad, but now she ain't got clothes that fit her and now she can't have the food and treats that she likes. It just, it, again, it's counterproductive. It just doesn't make any sense. And it only it looks like to a judge that you ain't, that you ain't bothered about your child, you know. As mm. soon as you start making it about the, uh, the mother, you've already lost. You know, yeah. It's got to be irrelevant. Your kid should be taken care of, regardless of whether the mother's been horrible to you or not. And I feel like this is where a lot of people go wrong. So where, where did you kind of find out how to be a dad, how to be a good dad? <laughs> Again, this is a tricky one because I lost my father from very young. So, yeah. and the, the, well, I won't go into the circumstances, but it weren't the best. I learned how to be a good dad and I learned what I shouldn't do. Okay. And again, it's like they say there's, you know, there's a saying, they say you'll have two brothers and the dad's an alcoholic. And one of the brothers, he's an alcoholic and he says, well, it's because I watch my dad drink every day. Mm. And the other brother says, I don't drink because I watch what it do to my dad. And it's all about, at what you take from your situation do you want it to be a a reason why you that you don't uh, don't mess up your the next generation or an excuse why you did yeah yeah, yeah. and i want to be a there to be a reason why the cycle's broken not why an excuse why it continued so that's that's quite powerful that's good yeah i think that's that's very good advice to give to to anyone who's in that situation definitely mm. considering you know everything you're going through currently and 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 what's happening what what would you say your vices are like how you know some people drink, some people smoke. What? How do you kind of deal with everything? And right now, I'm so initially last time it was I had to start the events and I had to start channeling all of that into something that was going to distract me from what was going on. Yeah. This time round, I I don't feel like that's you know I'm still doing a little bit of that on the side, but I, I've just got myself back into the gym every day. Um, I've made sure I'm not taking days off work unnecessarily. You know, sitting at home feeling sorry for yourself because it only just starts that little cycle. So. Just making sure you're you're doing something, you know. You you can't sit home feeling sorry for yourself. You have to go go and be kind of kind of productive with this, yeah. proactive. <laughs> okay. No, no, I understand. Yeah, yeah. And what do you do for work? Um, well, I do gardening um, during the day, yes. and um, I work with a few events um, up and down the country, uh, just putting singers into places where you know, some some of the weekdays I've noticed where there'd be a lot of pubs and clubs and bars and stuff which are most of the licensing fees that they have to pay every month is ridiculous and most of the revenue is generated over weekends so there's a lot of blank spaces during the during the week um 
I'm just kind of trying to work out where a lot of these venues need their back scratch, you know, how we can make people money on their, you know, least profitable days and whether that's putting singers into places in the right genres and the right orders, categories and stuff. But um, it made, we made a few quid from it. We're, just, we're still cracking the system. But again, this is another thing I'm probably going to be using over the next couple of months to keep myself entertained. Yeah. Is that, is that you working for an events company or, or is it something no, again, you set up? I started my own thing. Started my oh. own thing. Um, oh, I, following the, the, the one yourself in yeah, 2019? Yeah, I'm, I'm using the contacts, you know, the artists and the venues that I had back then to try and, you know, same sort of thing, but see how we can branch it out a little bit. That's quite a clever idea. Yeah, definitely. That's very good, yeah. Um, do you believe in the, any conspiracies, by the way? <laughs> I know oh, it's a bit I of random. this is one right now, isn't it? <laughs> um, do I believe in any conspiracies? Yeah. God, we're about to go deep, aren't we? <laughs> well, I we, mean... We ask everyone, that's why. Yeah, I, I definitely do. But if you ask me to think of one off the top of my head right now, I mean, I don't know what's... <laughs> there are definitely some conspiracies. Because my, I have a friend who believes uh, the Earth's flat. Oh my God, don't give me that. I was big growing up. I was very big on my astrophysics and astronomy. I mean, right. anything to do with space, and I'm, I was obsessed with. I, okay. can, I can say wholeheartedly that there is the Earth cannot be flat. But uh, if you look at the sun, you look at the moon, you look at every single thing. If you have a telescope, you can. It, just why would every single thing in the world follow certain laws of physics apart from? Yeah, it don't make any sense to me personally. And I've seen, you know, I've watched the videos of SpaceX and like sending rockets up. I mean, I know things can be easily manipulated these days. So again, you can't really base what you've seen on YouTube and on telly as, as facts. But again, from my understanding of how the world works and how physics works, it just don't make sense that the world could be flat. But I'd love for somebody to show me, like, and prove me wrong. I would love to. It would blow my mind. It would blow my <laughs> mind. It would change everything. No, fair enough, fair enough. And what, what would you say in life inspires you? What inspires me? Yeah. I know it's a deep question. It's a deep one. <laughs> and it's again, I think you're always inspired by different, you're, you're inspired by different things and different moments of your life, depending on what you want to do and what you want to be. Because we, what we want to do or what we want to be changes so many times throughout our life. I mean, when I wanted to be a footballer, um, when I was like every other teenager, um, I was, uh, my idol and my inspiration was people like Lionel Messi and Pele and Maradona, you know, just when I wanted to be a magician, I looked up to people like David Blaine and Dynamo. Um, when I wanted to be a, be a rapper, I looked up to Eminem. Um, yeah. I feel like these days, though, I tend to look up to my older self more than other people because when I look at what I managed to pull off and achieve in, in them times, despite the circumstances, mm. you know, they're not giving up no matter how hard things got, always finding a way, no matter how impossible it looked. That's kind of, that's the sort of, that's the sort of person I, uh, that inspires me now. And that's the sort of person I'm trying to pull out for this, to get through these uh, next few months, potentially years with this new and upcoming court case that's happening, so. That was a good answer, definitely, yeah. We, we haven't had that one before. I, I was gonna ask, um, what are your kind of plans for the next coming, upcoming years? Or what would you want to achieve both in the next three years? I want to change the world. <laughs> uh, I, I, want to, I want to just make sure that I'm able to give my daughter the, the life that I want to give her. Give, yeah. Take her out of the, the negative environments, take her, put her in the best, best schools, the best, have the best role models around her, the best people around her. And by doing that is, is improving myself, my circumstances, getting my legal rights and everything else that kind of set up and just getting myself the person I need to be to be the best dad for her so that's that's what I want to do for the next few years and whether that may, means I end up making millions from music from selling events from throwing events or, or what it's just being the best version of myself that I could possibly be nice okay well thank you very much for today Thank you for inviting me, Dan. It's been nice. And, and what's your socials? Uh, Facebook, Dempsey Lewis. Um, Instagram, Dempsey L Music, I think it is. And um, YouTube, Dempsey Official. Cool.